Hi, it's Ms. Parrott, and this video is about the level of organization within organisms. One of the big ideas in biology is that biological systems interact, and these systems and their interactions possess complex properties. We've already looked at how the environment is broken down into ecosystems, which are further broken down into abiotic factors, communities, and communities are broken down into populations, and populations into individual organisms. Well, in this video, we're going to take it to an even deeper level. So we're going to go from organism all the way down to the cellular level. As you know, multicellular eukaryotic organisms are made up of all different types of cells, right? You're made of muscle cells and nerve cells, um, bone cells, and blood cells. And all these different cells are specialized for a specific job. And when you put cells of a similar type, right, that have the same job together, that forms a tissue. And when you put those tissues together in a form that actually lets them do a function within the body, right, like the heart or the stomach or the lungs, those actually can do a job, that forms an organ. When you put organs together, different organs that function for a similar duty within the body, uh, you get an organ system. Right, like your endocrine system is made up of all the different glands within your body that make hormones. And when you put different organ systems together in just the right way, it makes a complete living being an organism. What I think is fascinating is that at each level, properties emerge that weren't there in the level before it, right? So an organ can do more than the cell type itself, right? For example, um, your brain can actually function to coordinate and control all of your body's functions, whereas one nerve cell can't do that same job, right? They have to be put together in just the right way for the property of coordination and control to emerge in the brain, right? And the brain can't uh, actually make your body do anything without all the other peripheral nerves in, and your spinal cord right, within your body. Right? That's your nervous system. So the big idea here, right, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Let's look at an example in animals. The animal we're looking at right now is you. We all have muscles. And muscles are made up of muscle cells. When you put those together, they make muscular tissue. And when you put those tissues in the right shape, in the right place, they actually have a function. And my example here of a muscle is your bicep, right here. And when I put my biceps together with all the other muscles in my body, right, it makes the muscular system. And when I put the muscular system together with the nervous system, digestive system, respiratory system, and all the others, it makes a complete human being, one complete organism. Animals, animals are not the only multicellular eukaryotic organisms that are divided into the levels of organization. Plants and fungi are as well. And we're going to look at an example of plants. There are specific types of cells in leaves whose main job is to do photosynthesis. These are called palisade mesophyll cells. And they are your basic plant cell that you always see in any biology book. And when you put these palisade mesophyll cells together, they form the palisade layer within the leaf. And again, the job of this, right, these will be to do photosynthesis. And when you put this tissue, this palisade mesophyll tissue, together in a certain shape, in a certain way, um, interacting with some other component parts of leaves, you get, well, an entire leaf itself. Then an organ system, right, within a, a plant, a tree, right, would be all the leaves together. Right, and they function to do photosynthesis in the plant. Right? And then you put all your leaves and stems and roots and flowers or cones 
and vascular tissue together and now you have an entire tree. You should take a minute and come up with an example of levels of organization of an organism for yourself.